Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, are you a Trump supporter or a Biden fan? Wait, this is a Linux channel? Let's leave the politics at the door and talk some Linux instead. Are snaps the future of Linux or are they a backdoor of doom? I'll wait. Oh, you're a Biden fan, you say? <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I know. You don't really want to talk about snaps much more anyway. This is the snap debate. It has become so lively that we may as well be debating the perfect tranquility of red and blue American politics. And my apologies to you guys who are not in the USA. Why do I say this about the snap debate? Well, it's because... The question is, will we all be able to come together and sing Kumbaya, my lord, and resolve our differences? Or will we be like Jack Sparrow and Barbosa, two immortals in an eternal fight? Like it or not, the snap debate will never be resolved. It is a political battle between two factions of the Linux community. And until we recognize the two factions for what they are, and embrace whichever side we are on, the two sides will continue to lob bombs back and forth, neither side ever advancing their positions. The question is, who are these two sides? Well, the first is the neckbeards. Brian Lunduke has talked in the past about the slow decline of the neckbeards in the Linux community. He tells tales of old where we would attend Linux conferences in the good old days and see nothing but scraggly little pewter rats. You know the type. He says, though, in the recent years, more and more people are arriving at these conferences actually clean-shaven. Who'd have thunk it? The neckbeards have declined, it would appear. This is the group of Linux users that started it all. They rallied against the tyranny of the big companies, even before most of us old computer normies who were still addicted to Windows until recently understood the evils that Microsoft and Apple were capable of doing. They were shouting it, not from the rooftops, but you know, from their headsets because that's what they do. They took their hobby, they built something amazing. A computer system that was free to use, free to customize, and free to build on top of. They believed in things like community support, free software, building on top of existing ideas, and they again usually wanted to do it all for free. They care about getting things working. They cared about privacy. They cared about being productive without becoming a slave, either personally in their bodies or conceptually in their minds to any other entity. This is indeed a very noble goal, which was the root of the Linux community. They have something going for themselves, but we do not live in a communist society. And I'm not saying everybody of that old neckbeard view is a communist. Just hear me out. Most of us have bills to pay. We have a mortgage. We have food to buy. We like to take a little break from time to time and go on vacation. All of that requires money. What the Neckbeards created, however, was an untapped gold mine, an opportunity for someone to come in and mine the potential that they created. Enter the suits. The suits are businessmen and women. They are interested in making money and that isn't evil, because the world revolves around money. The world revolves around needing money to pay the bills, to buy the food, to go on vacation. Money is needed for the noble pursuits in life. The suits see an untapped potential in the Linux community, and a desire to use what is built for profit. Now, are they using it, or are they just utilizing it? That's a debate for a different day. Well, the neckbeards are happy with their terminal, DOS scared the hell out of most would-be computer users. 
And when Microsoft released Windows 95, it was the start of the boom of easy to use GUI systems and the computer industry blasted off. The suits see a need to take the work of the neckbeards and make it user friendly. The easier the system is for the uninitiated to use, the more money can be made and then distributed among the people who participated in the plan. The suits have a good idea in mind. Take Linux, make it user friendly, and sell it as the solution to many problems. I see no issue with this approach. I am a capitalist who has been in business for over a decade. But the suit's goal, like the neckbeards, was not perfect. Part of the challenge in making a user-friendly system is to make that system difficult to break. That means locking things down, hiding the code, and only giving true access to a selected few people. After all, if anyone tinkered with the code, it can turn into something easy to use, like DOS 2.0. The problem, of course, is the neckbeards do not like closed code. This produces conflict. The conflict between these two parties is apparent. The neckbeards want open code, no matter the focus on user friendliness. The suits want closed code that only a few select people can control. Each of them have good and valid points. Some objections are a matter of philosophical differences that are likely to never be resolved. Others are simply misunderstandings. Let's use the suits versus neckbeards idea to look at some of the prevailing conflicts in this snap world. First idea is this proprietary store. This is the big first objection. The suits position, it works. We know it's good. And even if you have the option to change the source of the store, most people won't bother doing it anyway, so why bother? <laughs> the neckbeards always counter, of course, that until they, as a community, see the code, they are not willing to accept the answer given by the suits. So we see at the heart, this is a philosophical discussion. If the suits open up the code, the neckbeards would likely approve but they don't want to do that, and it's their code, so they don't have to do that. Fine. Let's just leave it at that. Now, I want to have a little parenthetical here, because there's some people that keep on throwing around this Ubuntu article about creating your own Snap Store. It's thrown around all over the place. I've seen it pop up several times in the debate. You can host your own store. Here's the link. Here's the proof. Am I actually the only one who read that article? I mean, really. Am I the only one who read that article? Let me walk through that article for everyone who didn't read it, because I'm not sure if anybody did. The required snap that is required for this store has been pulled down because it's not compatible with the current model of the snap store. Okay? In other words, there is a snap package that you'd have to install snap and then install a snap package that was a store and then point your snap uh, your Snapcraft or your SnapD application to that store that you just hosted, well, that Snap is not available anymore. It just doesn't exist. Sorry. <laughs> Very interesting. Next argument, X distro is limiting choice. Of course, this is centered around Linux, Mint, and Ubuntu. The big question thrown around, oh, Linux Mint is removing your choice, or oh, Ubuntu is removing your choice. I, I think I probably have said the latter. Let's go ahead and clear this up. Are either of these distros limiting the choice of the end user? Well, yes and no for both of them. Ubuntu goes out of the way to make it harder to use repository software. I tested it again just last night. Fully updated, brand new download, everything is working. The Ubuntu store pushes snaps. While there are certainly some repository items in there, they still don't work right as far as icons are concerned. You get generic broken icons for repository software. Many of those repository software packages are not there, but the corresponding and unofficial snaps are. The applications in the repository are only available through the, through the terminal with apt. Many of the snap versions of the same software are not official in any sense of the word. 
Try removing Snap from Ubuntu. It can be done. It's several lines of code, but several apt packages are going to reinstall it. So my word to the wise, if you do want to use Ubuntu and you don't want to use Snaps, make sure you install your GNOME Software Center before you remove SnapD because the GNOME Software Center reinstalls SnapD for you. Hey, why not? But it's several lines of code. You need to delete it. You need to purge the cache. You need to do a whole lot of different things. Linux Mint, on the other hand, prevents any apt packages from installing Snap unless you explicitly enable them. That takes a single line of code. I know the Linux Mint official documentation is three lines of code. I just don't think sudo apt update and sudo apt install snapd is really part of that. It's really one line of code. Remove the snaps pinning preferences file and you're good to go. Linux Mint in this situation clearly represents the neckbeards. We have choice, even the choice to use snaps. Ubuntu represents the, stu the suits. Use the snaps. They're easy to use. Neither is totally right. Neither is totally wrong. It's just a matter of your choice. Which way do you want to go? Next question. This is a fun one. People don't care where the software comes from. Is it true that people don't care where their software is from? Well, the suits and the next beards both do care where it comes from. But this question isn't addressed to the suits or the neckbeards. This is addressed to the basic common users. People don't care. Sure. This concern is centered on those end users. In reality, no. The end user does not really care where the software comes from. It could come from the repository. It could come from a snap. It could come from a flat pack. Who cares? It could be hand delivered by a Chinese spy. <laughs> so the debate is back to the corners of the neckbeard who wants to be able to look at the code, the distribution, and all that. The suit wants to do what's easiest to set up. So, the user is stuck in the middle. What's my stance on this? Well, if people don't really care where the code comes from, why don't you use Flatpak instead of Snap? It works much the same without the controversy. It's true. Flatpaks are not nearly as controversial as Snaps. If you're talking about people don't care where this code comes from, use the least controversial one. That's a good, interesting solution. Unfortunately, there's not as much to be made in there, and that kind of conflicts with the suit's viewpoint. So what are our final conclusions here? Uh, there obviously are a lot more arguments. Those are just the three big ones that I keep hearing about. And rather than going through all the rest of those arguments, we can see here that this is merely a philosophical, political debate. Am I concerned that Clem of Linux Mint did not accept the invitation to go to the conferences and talk about snaps? Not in the slightest, because the suits are trying to push the snaps onto the neckbeards and they're behaving like politicians trying to pass a bill that's already been rejected. Let's talk about passing this bill. I'm not interested in passing the bill. But let's talk about why, so we can get the bill passed. No, I'm not interested in the bill. But if you can tell me why, I can change the bill to make it better so we can pass it. <clears throat> Leave me alone. I'm just going to go over here and do my own thing. That's how the neckbeards feel with the whole snap debate. Clem is the ultimate neckbeard in my opinion. He's just not interested. Done. <laughs> That's the debate. Both sides have very valid points. Both sides can do what they want to do. The suits do not have the right to suggest that the neckbeards are simply spreading fear, uncertainty, doubt, or simply throwing stones because they don't take an interest in snaps. And likewise, the neckbeards do not have the right to sell the suits what to do with their computers, their code, and their projects. The bottom line is this. No side is going to convince the other side to fully be on board. The suits are here to make some money off the Linux systems, and that is perfectly okay. The neckbeards are here to get as far away from corporations as they possibly can. So they are not about to adopt the corporate-like Snap Store. Let us leave it here. So the question is, are you a suit or are you a neckbeard? I mean, I know I'm kind of clean-shaven right now. Maybe if I zoom in a lot more, you can see the 5 o'clock shadow. But just to prove that I am part of the neckbeard community, have a look at this old photo. 
In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I hope that this clears up some of the debate. Thank you for the Patreon and Think Life Media supporters and the rest of you viewers out there. Thanks for coming along. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.